Hi, I'd like to welcome everybody back to Estuary Live. We are here with our Scoots and Shells section. My name is Lindsay Thomas. I'm the Education Specialist over at the North Inlet Winyaw Bay Reserve. And with me here is Al Seegers. He's going to tell you a little bit about this um, lovely animal that we've got sitting here on the table. He's with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. He's with the uh, Marine Division and he's a veterinarian that works in the Ace Basin as well. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, welcome to Scoots and Shells. We got Orange Grove uh, Charter Elementary here, and everybody else, please uh, join us. My pleasure today not only introduce you to some pretty cool animals that are resident here on the South Carolina coast, but also some of the scientists and biologists that work with them. So I think you're in for a treat today, and um, hopefully you'll learn something about the animals we think are so important. We're going to look at, obviously, loggerhead turtles today. We're going to look at uh, alligators and diamondback terrapins, all of which are very important animals that utilize our estuaries. We'll start off with a loggerhead here. And I'm going to ask you to refer to an archived Eli presentation on turtles. Uh, Joanne McNeil and her group in North Carolina did this and had a lot of good basic information on turtles. And so visit that. Uh, we're going to jump right into an in-water project. Uh, we were funded by NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, seven years ago to actually go out and do an in-water project, which is just like it sounds like. We go out actually in the water and catch these turtles. And most of the work on sea turtles has actually been done on nesting females. They're accessible on the beach. And they asked us to really target juveniles, which are animals that have not really reached sexual maturity, and adult males. And so that's where we're going to focus on, on our, our loggerhead section. I guess the question is how you catch a, a loggerhead out in the ocean, which is where we work in this in-water study. And we actually use three trawlers. And I think we've got a picture of our trawlers uh, in the studio there. And they're actually fishing trawlers that have been converted as far as uh, use and research. And the big difference is we change in nets. Uh, these boats are about 80 feet long, but we, we use different size nets in them. So we've got a little video clip that'll actually show you uh, these nets at work. If you see the net, we've actually got doors, big wooden doors. These weigh hundreds of pounds. They're utilized actually to spread the net. And if you see the net, you can see the mesh is very large. We don't want to catch shrimp and crabs and fish. We want to catch turtles. So we have about eight inch mesh net. You see they're yellow floats. It'll actually keep the net up, excuse me. And we actually have rollers on the bottom. So the net rolls across the bottom, doesn't get snagged and doesn't actually tear up the bottom. The next video clip actually shows a net going in the water. And this video clip was given us by the University of Georgia Marine Extension Service. And they actually test these nets, test the turtle excluder devices. And you can actually see the door spreading. You can see the net running along the bottom. And the net itself only fishes about four feet off the bottom. And we were actually using two nets, one on each side of the boat, about 45 feet wide on each side. So pretty unique devices. Uh, we're out in the middle of the ocean, kind of randomly sampling for turtles. But we had some great results, and we feel like we've really learned about these particular life stages. As you see this turtle come up on deck, next thing we actually catch the turtles, we put them on deck, and we've got a little video clip of a turtle on the deck itself. Uh, this is not a torture device, we're actually weighing this turtle. We'll take multiple measurements, we take lots of blood samples, we'll do genetics, we study toxicology. We're really trying to find out about the health of these animals and about the health of the ecosystem as a whole. So it really gives us a great opportunity to get hands on. Uh, the animals generally stay on deck about 20 minutes and we have them back in the water, not happy but relieved to be rid of us anyway. Great. One of the things we uh, have done is a great technological tool we've been able to utilize is satellite telemetry. And it's really allowed us to fill in a lot of the gaps in life history on these animals. And Mike Arndt's a biologist. He's been with our sea turtle in water project since its inception. And so I'm going to ask Mike to come in and talk about satellite telemetry a little bit. And uh, we're going to get our friend just to sit here for a minute. Okay. You doing good? I'm doing great. All right. Great. Mike? Thank you, Al. Uh, as Al mentioned, uh, in our, in our uh, in-water study, we caught lots of loggerhead sea turtles, but we didn't recapture a lot of them. And uh, that's, that could be a very good sign. It could indicate that there's a lot of turtles swimming around out there, so the chances of catching a tag turtle are pretty slim. But because there really wasn't any information available to us on their distributional patterns, we decided that we needed to utilize a uh, technique known as telemetry. Uh, telemetry enables researchers to basically take a hands-off approach to studying an animal. You catch it, you put a device on it, it goes back in the water and you can monitor it from the convenience of your office. Now there's two types of telemetry tags. The first is an acoustic transmitter. This transmitter sends a signal underwater and 
for a, a large part that researchers need to actually stay with the animal to monitor it, although there have been a lot of new developments that basically allow you to make an array of uh, listening stations to, uh, to listen for that tag. But the type of tag that we are using with our loggerhead sea turtles is a satellite transmitter. Now this is not a real satellite transmitter, but it's a mock-up of what one looks like. And this sends a radio wave in the air that actually bounces off of a satellite and sends it back to a receiving station in Europe and then through uh, a, a variety of other stations we end up getting emails telling us where our turtles are located. Well, Mike, I did want to ask you a minute. Um, we know that some, there are some projects that are online, um, but Robert, how would you like it if you had one of these things on your back all the time? Very, very unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, what if we put it on your head? Even more. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that, that's kind of the basics of how um, satellite telemetry works, but next I want to talk about why would we do this? And as I said, one of, one of our immediate interests was where are these animals going once we release them? If we catch them in the summer, do they stay in the areas where we are likely to catch them again in the summer, or do they go somewhere else? And similarly, do they stay close to our coast uh, in the winter time, or do they go far away and, and maybe they're not going to come back the next year when we're out there doing our sampling? Uh, one of the other things that we would be interested in is uh, particularly like for the loggerhead, is it's a diving animal. We want to know how long is it staying on the bottom, how deep is it going, and uh, what are some of the environmental factors that would influence that type of behavior. Uh, for instance, the tide stage, or the time of day, or the water temperature, or even the uh, salinity. Um, the reason that's important is because if you're doing a survey to catch animals, or if you're in an airplane trying to visually observe animals, you need to know when are they going to be in an area where you could possibly survey them. So the way we attach this transmitter to the turtle is uh, we first clean off the, um, the shell and this, this turtle, uh, Kelly Thorvalson is going to tell you more about this particular turtle, um, but its shell is pretty clean right now and it's really important that we have a nice clean surface to attach this transmitter because this keratin actually sheds uh, just like your fingernails grow and so we, we want to get it down to the cleanest part possible to keep the transmitter on as long as possible. Once we get the shell clean, we use some uh, commercial epoxies. Uh, this, this particular type is called Sonic Weld, and uh, it's a two-part epoxy. You take it out of the tube, you mash it around like Play-Doh, it, it gets warm. You, uh, you, you actually coat the bottom of the transmitter with it and stick it right on top. It would, it would set right about there. And, one of the things with these juvenile loggerheads is that ideally we want it as high up as possible so that it, it always comes out of the water when the turtle surfaces. But you can see there's a little bit of a ridge there. So one thing we've been having to do is, is kind of set these off to the side a little bit and use some extra uh, sonic weld to make a nice firm seal around there. And then once that's done, we use this other epoxy. It's called uh, Power Fast. And we stick it in this gun and squirt it out just like a, uh, a caulking gun and we basically uh, just make a nice uh, like cake icing it looks kinda like cake icing and we smooth it around and make sure there's no hard edges we don't want this turtle to, to bump into something that'll rip that transmitter off so we want to try to make it as hydrodynamic as possible so that it flows smoothly in the water and then we let it set and uh, once we feel like it's on there good and the epoxy's cured we, we put the animal back uh, Al said it you know, normally takes about 20 minutes to get the turtle back in the water if we don't do this extra uh, procedure. Um, it takes maybe about an hour total to do this extra procedure. So it's really not that time intensive. And uh, I'd also forgot to mention that all of these procedures that we do are, uh, they're federally permitted and approved by the National Marine Fisheries Service. Uh, we go to great lengths to make sure that anything we do to these animals is not going to harm them. And uh, so it's real important to stress that there is a peer review process and that all of the things that we're doing are okay to do to these animals.